damn it, that This is the wrong room. <clears throat> Here's a Sonic character that nobody hates. E-102 Gamma, the robot built by Dr. Eggman, who managed to reclaim his free will and would go on a robot murdering spree to liberate his brothers. What? Welcome to Origin Oracle My Adults, the segment where I take a deep dive into the origins of your favorite characters. So, to finish off Sonic Adventure, let's talk about one of the more sympathetic characters in the series, E-102, codename Gamma. E-102 Gamma first appeared in Sonic Adventure as a playable character, and for the very first time in the series would be able to play as one of Dr. Eggman's robots. His story begins with a first-person shot of Dr. Eggman leering over him. <laughs> Yo, take a couple of steps back, Eggman. Thank you. So much like other robots in the series, there's a flicky within Gamma being used to power him. And I'll talk more about the flickies in a bit, but for now just know it's a pink bird that was kidnapped that would be used to create Gamma. After Eggman welcomes Gamma to the world, he sends him into the shooting range where we'll get a gist of his gameplay. And seeing as they were trying to diversify the Sonic Adventure roster with several different gameplay styles, Gamma appeared as an action shooter stage. Equipped with a laser gun with homing capabilities, you traverse a time stage, shooting as many targets as possible which would give you small time bonuses, and I will admit, it's quite satisfying. This style of gameplay would be carried over to Sonic Adventure 2 for the Tails and Eggman stages, with a few tweaks here and there. Let me know in the comments which one you guys prefer. So Gamma here gets to shoot plushies of Knuckles and Tails. and finishes off the level by destroying a Sonic doll. With these dangerous hostiles neutralized, Eggman starts to believe that Gamma is ready to serve aboard his flying fortress, the Egg Carrier. But before being promoted to his new crew, he has to take on his older brother Beta, and with a name like that, we all know who comes out victorious. After his crushing defeat, Beta pleads like a Beta with Eggman to join them on the ship, and with his big heart, Eggman obliges by sending him on board to be used for spare parts. After being welcomed aboard with the most pathetic fanfare scene, Eggman sends Gamma and his three younger brothers Delta, Epsilon, and Zeta to hunt down a frog that swallowed a Chaos Emerald and Chaos's tail, who at this point is working with Eggman to destroy Station Square. If you all watched my Big the Cat Origin Oracle, you'd know he's referring to Froggy, the one being held against his will by Big. Froggy, don't blink if you need to be rescued. Why are you running? I'm just kidding, they're supposed to be best friends. But after Gamma has retrieved Froggy, Eggman gives him great praise and disposes of the rest of the E100 series, beaming them out to various locations. With Gamma properly proving himself, his next orders are to retrieve a bird that was captured alongside Amy, and on his way to their jail cell, poor Gamma here steps into the wrong room, only to see Beta being ripped apart and remodeled, and you can truly perceive his genuine shock from this scene here. Beta? Already it seems like our robot friend is growing a conscience, and this is pushed further when he goes to retrieve the bird from Amy, who makes an attempt to convince Gamma to release them. After staring at the bird for a moment, Gamma changes his mind and releases both of them from captivity. This act of kindness would later have Amy try to convince Sonic and Gamma to stop fighting when Eggman pits them against each other on the deck of the egg carrier. In Gamma's story, Amy will continue to convince Gamma that he's not an evil robot, proven in the moment that he saved her, and this causes him to reflect on the horrors that he's seen while working for Eggman, deleting his master registration, and vowing to search for his lost brothers and save them one by one by destroying them. Yes, this is a story of betrayal and assassination, depending on which side of the story you're looking at. But we'll break down his definition of saving them in a second. I want to show some concept art first. And there isn't much information on the background for the design of Gamma, but there are multiple concepts of what this robot was supposed to look like. A majority of these designs would look a lot like the Egg Robos from Sonic 3 and Knuckles with much smaller bodies, but the eyes would remain more or less the same throughout development. I love that this one actually looks like it was going to be a mini ATAT -AT from Star Wars, or is it pronounced AT-AT? Star Wars fans, check me on that. So Gamma's final design would be used to create the E100 series, which in this particular game consists of Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, and Zeta, who are more or less identical and only color swapped at first. 
There's also Zero, the Rastafarian robot who is stalking Amy and the bird throughout their whole story in Sonic Adventure, who is dubbed as more of a prototype to the E-Series, hence his name. It's implied that the E-100 series are more specialized units for hunting and assassination. And in comparison to all the robots we've seen from Eggman at this moment in time, maybe except for Metal and Mecha Sonic, they are leagues more intelligent with the capability of speech, except for Beta. Each unit has a particular flicky inside them. So while I'm on the topic, these things actually predate the Sonic franchise by seven years. First introduced in an arcade game known as Flicky, released in 1984. And yeah, this is Sega's attempt at biting off of that other arcade game, Mappy, that was doing very well at the time by Namco, which makes me believe that Sega reached a lot of success by copying other people. But you know, hey, that's neither here nor there. We're not having that conversation today. So in this flicky game, you'd control a small blue bird that would collect chicks. No, not those chicks, these chicks. And these chicks were wandering around the level, so as you collect them, you would return them to a doorway which would lead to the next level once you've collected all of them. So this character would be repurposed for the Sonic series alongside other small animals that would be used to power Eggman's robots. And you're probably also used to them bursting out of the capsules at the end of the levels of various Sonic games. Alright, so let's get back to Gamma, and the moment he announced his free will. He decides at that moment he's going to save the rest of the E100 series robots, and goes to track them down in various levels, destroying them one by one to save the flippy inside. See, this confused me as a kid, because this isn't exactly my idea of saving them until you think on it a little bit more. Is it the flicky inside Gamma that is driving it to destroy these robots and release his actual flicky friends inside? Or is this the will of the robot Gamma destroying the other robots to release them from this life of servitude to Eggman? Or is it a combination of both? So this isn't explicitly explained in the game, so I'd love to see your thoughts in the comments. So Gamma proceeds to take on the remodeled versions of Delta, Epsilon, and Zeta. And Zeta looks ridiculous, by the way. At, at least the others are capable of moving. But once you've successfully assassinated all your younger brothers, I'm sure YouTube demonetized me for that one, Gamma goes back to the deck of the Egg Carrier for one last roll call with one of the most well-delivered lines in his story. Units remaining. Gamma. This gives me straight chills. So now we have to fight Beta in his new badass form, E101 Mark II, with one of my favorite tracks blaring in the background. This is really an awesome boss battle, I have nothing else to say about it. And at the end of the fight, Gamma is victorious, but with his last few moments, Beta blasts Gamma point blank, causing fatal damage. And Gamma can only process his last few moments and gazes upon the flicky that was inside Beta. At the last second, Gamma remembers his family the gray flicky that's inside Beta, and the blue bird that was around Amy when he released her from Eggman's prison. With Gamma destroyed, the pink flicky is released and reunited with the gray one that was within Beta, and eventually at the end of Amy's story, they are both united with the blue flicky as well. So it's not explicitly stated in the English version of the game, but I always thought that the flicky inside Beta and Gamma were the parents of the blue one that was hanging around Amy, since she refers to them as his family. So imagine my confusion when the Sonic the Hedgehog in Cyclospedia refers to the gray and pink flicky as his parents, only to later contradict this in the same book and say they're his older brothers. So just to clear this up, in the Japanese version of Sonic Adventure, they are explicitly referred to as siblings. So with that in mind, it's cool to theorize that Birdie here probably was meant to be placed inside E-103 Delta, who would have been the next in line but got away while Eggman was capturing them. Delta is a darker shade of blue, Gamma is a darker shade of red that matches the pink flicky, and Beta is colored black with his flicky being gray. So probably not intentional, but maybe they thought about this when they gave Delta his color, who knows. Anyway, we wouldn't see much of Gamma after his destruction, though the pink flicky is included in the final chapter of Sonic Adventure, hanging alongside Amy before Sonic transforms into Super Sonic to take down Chaos. In Sonic Adventure 2, we would see new robots known as E-1000s that are more or less based on Gamma's model, but they are definitely less intelligent and are pretty simple enemies to take down. I imagine that Eggman just built these in Gamma's likeness because he liked Gamma so much, who knows. The closest we'd get to Gamma returning in an actual storyline was in Sonic Battle, where a machine called Chaos Gamma is created by Eggman. It's actually stated by Rouge the Bat that Chaos Gamma was constructed by Eggman using the Chaos Emeralds on robot cores as power sources. So it's heavily implied he may have used the remains of Gamma to construct this new version. 
A more subtle appearance of Gamma in the games can be found with E-123 Omega, who serves as the last member of the E-100 series. He debuts in Sonic Heroes, and I'll more than likely be covering more of Omega's origins at a later date, but there are some theories that Gamma's parts could have been used to build him as well, thus resulting in his rebellious nature against Eggman. Which I'd love to see confirmed at some point since he's the perfect character to carry on the mantle that Gamma left behind. Although he's destroyed, we've seen many cameos with Gamma across the franchise with him recently being released as a playable character in the mobile game Sonic Forces Speed Battle, just in time for this Origins video. But seriously, I didn't plan that, I'm just a prophet. And then of course, there's the other source of media I want to talk about, the Archie comics, yay! So a lot of the events in the Archie comic mirror the games with some minor differences. Gamma is created along with the other units of the E100 series using Flickies to power them. The robots compete with each other to track down Froggy, but Gamma is victorious much like the games, but he knocks out Big the Cat in Cat Country to capture Froggy from him, so I thought that was a funny little detail. And as you all know, Eggman decides to dispose of the other E100 series who didn't return the frog. So while the scene with Amy and the blue flicky still occurs with Gamma releasing both of them from captivity, the major difference here is that the flicky within Gamma is identified as the parent to the blue one, probably intentionally done to confuse the fuck out of all of us even further. To add insult to injury, she was supposed to be pink, but was colored brown because the colorist missed a note from Ian Flynn. Womp. So screw the Chaos Emeralds, Rings, Special Zones, Humans in Sonic games, these birds are the least consistent part of the Sonic series, bar none. Sometimes they're female, sometimes they're male, other times they're a trio of siblings, other times they're parents and children. You could call these birds anything that you want. Apparently this bird is called Lily in Sonic X, but it's called Birdie in Sonic Adventure. Who do I believe with these birds? I'm about to lose my mind figuring out how these birds what are they supposed to do? What is life? Why do they keep changing? Is my next origin oracle gonna be on these birds? I'm so sorry about that, let's move on. Anyway, Gamma would gain free will and go completely rogue in the comics, destroying every E100 series robot, like in Sonic Adventure, but he would actually live to see another day and would travel the world fighting against Eggman as a lone soldier. I really love this idea, and though it would kind of ruin his story in Sonic Adventure, him surviving the final battle with Beta works in the comic book setting. Gamma would continue to fight against Eggman for the next year before meeting Shadow the Hedgehog, who would attempt to enlist him as an asset to the guardian units of the nation. Gee, you went seriously. Gun, yeah. Gamma actually agrees to this proposal and is interested in assisting Shadow and Gun before they're ambushed by E-123 Omega, who is sent by Eggman to destroy Gamma once and for all. Gamma, who was beginning to wear down prior to the battle, still attempts to take on Omega, but is outdated in comparison and is overpowered by the massive robot. Gamma eventually surrenders, but tells Omega that his soul is indestructible and would continue to linger inside of him. In his last moments, Gamma manages to upload his algorithm for free will into Omega's programming as Omega destroys him. And the flicky inside is finally released, and as Gamma said, his soul lives on within Omega, who discovers his free will, and chooses to join Shadow and Gun in the fight against the Eggman Empire in place of Gamma. So long live E-102 Gamma, one of Eggman's greatest creations. I honestly love this character, even down to his smooth as butter voice in Sonic Adventure. Gamma lives on as the calm, collected, and compassionate robot that Sonic fans see as one of the best character stories written in the series, and I don't think this Origin Oracle series would have been complete without his presence. And with that, my children, we move on to Sonic Adventure 2, a major entry point for many fans of the series, so don't miss the next exciting Origin Oracle, it's gonna be a doozy. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the content and a comment. It truly helps in my ongoing fight with the YouTube algorithm. And until next time, be safe. The Prophet has spoken.